Hey guys, in this Anime Studio tutorial, we create the illusion that a character is running behind a pillar on a static image just by using masking. So with this tutorial, you can see that we have a cave, and we have our running character from the running tutorial, which by the way, if you want to learn how to animate a character running, be sure to click the link and check out that tutorial. But anyway, what we have here also on the side is our layers panel with three group layers for masking. Only focus on masking sample three as we use the same document for all three of our masking tutorials for this week. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so as you can see on the layers panel, we have the masking group layer, which has a character and a mask vector layer inside it. But we have the image itself outside of the group layer, and that's important. So make sure you have your setup similar. Again, mask and the guy are on the inside. The mask is below the character. So what we're going to achieve here, or try to achieve, is having the character run through the cave. Now, that would be simple enough without masking. But what we want to do is we want to have the character actually go behind this pillar we have in the cave. As you can see right now, that's not occurring. So we can use that mask vector layer to create some shapes on both sides of the pillar to make this work. So we'll click on the mask vector layer, and then we'll come over here to the draw shape tool, just to make this easy for right now, and we'll select a rectangle and we're going to start at the top of the pillar and come down to about where his feet meet the ground and we'll draw out a rectangle like so. It doesn't matter what color it is just as long as it's filled in and we'll, we'll do the same now on the other side here just like that. So now if we double click on that mask group layer what we can do is go into the masking tab and then select hide all and then hit apply. Make sure you always hit apply so that you apply the effects. You can hit OK as well, but it's always a good practice to hit apply. Now what we can do here is see what this does. If we move the guy, voila, he goes behind the pillar. He's actually only appearing where the black mask is, but the black mask is still there. If we double click on the mask layer, go to masking and choose the bottom option, clear the mask, then add this layer invisibility to it, and then we can hit apply. You can see now it removes that black mask. We can go back here and we can move it and you can see that it works. He is going behind the pillar. Of course, the rectangles are not very accurate. So what you can do now then is come in with your add point tool and you can add some points. Now, like the other masking tutorial that we did with the car, this isn't going to be 100% either because if we spent a lot of time on it, we would have a very long tutorial. This gives you the idea, though, of what you need to do after this. Just kind of come in here and get those points lined up with the object that you want to have the character run behind, basically, in this case. So we can just come down here and add these points. And when we get to the bottom here, we can just simply take the Translate Points tool and just nudge this one over like that. Now we will do the same for this side. Now again, remember the way we have this set up, the character will only appear where you have these two objects for the mask. So if you want him to run all the way across the screen, you'd probably also want to extend your points to the other side of the screen. Otherwise, it'll look like he just kind of disappears halfway through the run. And you might see that here momentarily when he's on the edge of the screen. You might see that he's cut off. And that's because, again, the mask doesn't extend that far out. So it's kind of cool, and that could give you some effects in itself. But just a note for you there. So what we can do now, we can just kind of test this. You can see when he runs, it looks a lot more convincing now. We could still probably do a little bit more work on it. And you can see now he's disappearing from that mask, as I was pointing out before. But that works pretty good. So what we can do now is we can take the transform layer tool, create a keyframe at one, and then just move him to frame 72. 
and we can also, if we want here, uh, change the keyframes to linear. So we'll just highlight those keyframes, right click and choose linear just to get a linear motion here so it's not easing in and out. And then we can just hit Control J to hide the workspace and then hit play here to see what it looks like. And it looks pretty cool. It's um, He's going a little bit too slow in this case, but you could just nudge your keyframe up to make him go faster. You can hit play and see it again. And he's probably still going a little bit too slow, but you get the idea that you could play with this and you could get the right speed for the character. The point here is masking the pillar here so that it looks like he's going behind it, which we have achieved in about five minutes, which is a, uh, which is pretty cool. But anyway, this has been a joint incredible tutorial. My name is Chad Trofgerbin. Jim Mills recorded the tutorial, and I, of course, narrated. If you would like more incredible tutorials, you can visit us at incrediblettutorials.com, or you can check us out on Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. Also, if you don't have Anime Studio and you want to follow along with this tutorial and many others, and you want to create some amazing animations, be sure to check out the product link in the YouTube description box. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.